Oh yes, well, I'll move on. I put my Land Rover, I've got a Land Rover Discovery, which um, to some people might be a bit of a poser of a car. Um, but to me, it's a, a machine that I can sew a paddock with in utter comfort. <laughs> like an English gentleman I am. <laughs> with my rickety machines out the back. That's what they're designed for, really. Um, we have a muck around with all sorts of things and playing with different machines. Uh, this one here, um, um, subsoils to 26 inches and then um, tills the soil and then pulls up a mound using a 55 horsepower tractor. So instead of using those big, very, very uh, fuel consuming machines we, um, with multiple passes and lots of compaction and all of the rest of it, we put all these things together. I mean, that's a, something that the U US agriculture hasn't got their heads around yet. In, um, in Europe, where fuel is something like six or seven dollars a gallon, um, they have multiple pass agricultural equipment. So you don't just have a chisel plough, you also have a cultivator and you have a seeder all passed in one. You know, I was driving down from San Francisco this morning or through all of the market, grow, market gardening, gardening areas in the Salinas area and whatnot. And there's uh, all of these uh, people out ripping and then they're going through and doing another pass and another pass and it's all of this, you can see where all of the, uh, the uh, fossil fuels are going and um, you can also see all of this dust that's being raised and um, that's all of your carbon out of your soils, which is all being oxidised. So, you know, we have a duty not only to the amount of fuel that we use, but also to the soil that we use, um, that we're, we're losing it. We're not only losing our fuel, we're losing our soil from all of this um, passing. This is another one. This machine plants 5,000 trees an hour straight into pasture, which is a bit of fun. It's actually not... You've, you know, you're sort of going about this sort of... Actually, no, it's about... You get to... It's a bit difficult for me because I'm, um, I'm a bit of a dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and um, so it's a bit of fun. That's George. George is one of my um, major clients and um, he's a bit of a character. And um, he sponsors a lot of research. We do a lot of research. We test a lot of stuff out on his farm. He's got about 500 species of plants on his property. This pasture here has something like um, there's something like 120 species of um, pastoral species in it. We're basically recreating a uh, herbal lay meadow system in a dryland climate. Something that you'll all become the benefit of. Bene, bene, uh, you'll be the beneficiaries of that sort of research in years to come because we'll be sharing that with people. But you know, we're testing it, testing our stuff here um, and uh, having a bit of fun. That's where we've been. You can't see where we've been actually. Um, anyway, all sorts of stuff. Um, you know that we've got peak oil, we've got peak water, uh, we've also got peak plastic which is really going to scare me because I love plastic. And um, so we're growing plastic trees on our research farm. And um, we found that they, um, they benefit from mulching and um, you get increased growth rates also from nitrogen fixing cover crops. Um, very well, very, very good indeed. Especially um, peas, they like peas. And um, that, they grow really well. So, yeah, you should get onto that. It's the latest thing. 